Hi everyone, I'm Jessica from What I Have Learned and I've got my good friend uh, Jill here with us today and we are working on some third grade science stations and I want to show you a little bit about them and also show you how we are um, modeling one of the stations and we'll put that up um, for you guys to see, but also for the students be, to be able to see it as well, um, taking some photos of it, making sure it's part of the product. So as part of our new science stations, we have, let me turn this around. We have, um, there are eight different stations. One of the stations is a modeling station, and this one is um, in draft form still, so it's still missing some of the pictures down here. But there's a teacher note section, there is um, a student instructions, which is what we're kind of gonna be going through today. There are some task cards the students would answer in both short answer form. So if they've got science journals, the short answers are there. And there's also task cards that have uh, multiple choice answers. And then a couple different worksheets, which are just different ways um, of asking the same things. Uh, again, short answers. And then one of them um, is kind of a fill in the blank version if your students need a little bit more scaffolding. But what we're doing today is actually some flower dissection. So you can see over here, um, I'll let Jill explain most of it, but um, there's a recording sheet that the students would use as well as a diagram and a few other pieces. All right, so today we are going to be doing the flower dissection. And you'll want to show your students the um, diagram of the flower. This has all of the parts of a typical flower labeled. And one thing that students at third grade aren't going to be expected to know is the specific parts of the male part of the flower, the anther and the filament, as well as the female parts, the stigma and the style. You'll just show them that the pistil is this part, which is the female uh, part of the flower, the part that receives the pollen, and the stamen is where the pollen is made. But it isn't a bad idea to begin introducing these words to them as later on when they're um, in upper elementary or middle school and in high school they'll be actually expected to know those parts of the flower. Um, and then you'll certainly be able to see them. We use the Alstroemeria, the, the Peruvian lily, for this dissection. And there are several reasons. One is it's an excellent flower for a flower dissection. It has all of the parts of the the male and the female are easily identifiable the female part is in here it's the one that doesn't have the purple heads on it it's right down there um, the male parts have the pollen um, and also it's very inexpensive which as teachers we like things that are um, not expensive an entire bundle of flowers could be used to teach two classes. So you could go in on it with um, another colleague or just have extra flowers left over. And it, they should be four or five dollars for the entire bouquet of flowers. And they're pretty readily available all year round. These are often used as um, filler flowers and I can find them at the grocery store all year long. You can use any type of flower you want. Just these are the most abundant and the least expensive. So to do the flower dissection, um, often, uh, I mean, you could use a scalpel, but with third grade, I probably would just go ahead and use scissors. And you can even, if you're very careful, just um, uh, pull them apart with your hands. But um, I, I'm going to go ahead and use scissors. With the Alstroemeria, it's not, uh, the sepals, which are the outer covering of the flower, what cut makes the bud before the flower opens up. The sepals aren't, aren't um, and some flowers, they're little green, uh, they look like petals or leaves. In, in the Alstroemeria, they also look like petals. So you'll know which ones are the sepals because they have the tough green middle part right there. So you'll take your scissors and very carefully cut off the sepals. Um, the, the worksheet has the petals first and sepals second. You could do them in either order. Um, I'll just cut these off right here and then you can see which ones are the petals. They don't have that tough exterior um, green part. 
So then we'll cut the petals off and, and I'm just going to keep these separate. And then we'll put this aside. And then all we do is tape it down. And I, I like to tape, make sure the tape is fully covering the entire sepal and the entire petal because then this will preserve nicely and it will actually stay pretty nice looking in the student's science notebook for a while, probably for the rest of the school year, as long as it's fully covered. So we'll just do this. And if you, you can use clear scotch tape or um, packing tape is a little trickier to use, but whatever kind of tape, the clear tape that you have. Oops, I left a little piece uncovered there. I don't, otherwise if, if it's exposed to oxygen, it will turn brown. And then one more piece and we have the sepals all done. And then we'll do the same with the petals. And Alstra Maria, this Peruvian lily comes in all different colors. So you might find pink or orange, purple. It's kind of fun to have a variety of different colors too. And students can choose from it. This is an act, a laboratory activity that students really like because it it's something that they're all familiar with flowers, but they really get to see how um, how the parts are really they all come together and they work. They the it just uh, brings it to life. And there we go. All right, now it's time to find the pistil, the female part of the flower, and this is hard to find sometimes. You can see that one of my uh, stamens, the anther, the, the anther did come off, and sometimes in these, the anther will come off, so you wanna, um, that's the, the anther is this end part right there, and so it, if it might be completely off, and if so, it would look like this, and then it would be tempting to think that this is the pistil, so be very careful that you're not confusing that. The pistil is shorter and right in the center. That's how you'll tell whether it's a, um, a filament that's missing the anther or whether it's the pistil. And the pistil, if you look really closely, it's not just one stalk. It has sort of um, an opening in there, which is where the pollen will go in once this flower gets pollinated. I'm going to cut off all of the stamens, being very careful not to um, cut off the pistil at this point. I'm gonna work my way around until I get them all off. And you'll notice in this flower, there are three petals three sepals, six stamens, and that's because in this kind of flower, here's a little science trivia for your day. Your students won't need to know this. This is a monocot flower, and um, that means the leaves, the veins and the leaves are all um, going in one direction, and everything is in multiples of three in monocot flowers. more science information for you to help your students understand kind of how things are grouped together. And we're missing one. Remember this one was missing its filament and that, I mean, it's a anther and that's okay because the anther is meant to come off. It's where the pollen is and the pollen is meant to, to, to leave this flower and go pollinate another flower. And then we have the pistil left, and I'm gonna kinda cut off, we have the bottoms of some of the filaments here, we don't need those parts. 
And this goes right here. There's only one of those because there's one pathway to get the pollen into the single ovary in the plant, and that's in here. The ovary is inside there. This whole thing right here is the ovary. And what I would suggest you have your students do is cut it open very carefully. So you just cut it right in half. You may want to do this as the teacher uh, or have your students do it as best they can. And inside there is where the seeds are. And this would be a good time to get magnifying glasses out and take a look at those. The ovules are where the seeds are made once the, um, the pollen fertilizes the, the ovules inside the, the ovary. Then the seeds, then the flower dies and the seeds start developing inside the, the ovary, which is the fruit. And so then students will record how many petals. And you might want to point out that there are, in this flower, there are three sepals and there are six stamens. So point out that it, that, that is a multiple of three. And if you, um, if, if we were able to, to cut, to use a, a scalpel with this and look more closely with magnifying glass, you would notice that there are six ovules inside the ovary as well. It's another multiple of three. So there is your flower dissection. Have fun with it. Okay, can't help. Alrighty. <laughs> so thank you for joining us here today with um, this flower dissection. See so if I can get farther back. I know it's a little hard with the um, oh, with the uh, Facebook Live uh, and the tripod and everything. But thank you for joining us today with the flower dissection and for being able to um, experience some of our science stations with us. And um, we look forward to sharing more of it with you in the future. Take care, guys.